Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about getting notified when a drive fails in FreeNAS. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we'll be working on this together. This content is available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you're paying for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, we're going to talk about several things that you can do. First is getting FreeNAS to where it can send the alerts because you can get all these alerts enabled, but unless you've got it a way for it to talk to a mail server somewhere, whether it's an internal one you've got on your local network or it's uh, Gmail, there's ways you have, I'm going to show you how I've got Gmail set up. You've got to have it way for it to talk to the outside world. Then we're going to talk about something called volume scrubbing. And think of this kind of like the old DOS FSCK command where you're checking the file system because having a drive fail and then finding out you've got corruption in the volume, well, you may be in worse shape. So the other thing is we're going to enable two different sets of smart tests. That's S period, M period, A period, R period, D, T period. These are not, all of these are non-destructive tests. You want to make sure that the drive itself isn't starting to go out. So we're going to get to that and we'll just take it one step at a time. So let's switch over to not that one, but that one. And what we will go in and do is we'll first go down here to system. And what we need to, actually, no, we uh, back up a, back up a bit here we're going to go to users because this is all going to fall into place and i'm going to try to make it very straightforward for you now the root user this is the one that we're going to have to go in and make a little change to and basically you want the email address you want the email to go to that's that's the important thing you want this is going to be actually be the receiving address so this is the one that's going to receive the alerts so you put that address in there now the next thing we go is we'll go down here to system and to email now what we'll want to do is it can be this can be anything you want it to be in terms of the from email i just let i think it's defaulted at root at freenas.local so that's why i left it and the from name, think of this as the friendly name. So FreeNAS admin made sense to me. Now, to get this to work with Google, and I've got the settings in the description, so that this will help you a little bit. You'll first go to smtp.gmail.com for the outgoing mail server. Now, the documentation you may find may say you've got a choice of SSL or TLS. Well, guess what? Google doesn't support SSL anymore, so you're going to be left to doing TLS. And in that case, you want to make sure that you're going to be using port 587. This will be the login credentials because you will check SMTP authentication. Then you will put the username for that account, and then you will have the password. Now, these are all blanked out when you're seeing this video, but you get the idea of what has to happen. Now, once you've got this all done, click on the send test email and you'll see it say starting job. Now, when you see that, you're good. Now, on Gmail, you're probably going to have to go into your settings and enable what they call unsafe uh, application access. Now, don't let that scare you. If you've got a good password, you're probably okay. And I've actually, I'm setting up a separate account that that's all this will ever do is just send emails. If you have two-factor authentication enabled, then what you will want to do is get what they call an application password, which is this very long password. But use that, and that way you don't have to enable the unsafe application access that Google is going to start hollering about when you go into your account settings in Google. 
So it's just very straightforward. Just go to it. You'll go down under security and it, they sometimes move stuff around, but you'll, you'll be able to find it soon enough. And if you have a problem finding it, let me know and I can do a more detailed video, but this is what you've got to get done to start with for things to work. So having said that, now that we've got this done, go down here to scrub tasks. Okay. We'll go into YouTube, click on the drop down. And we are going to do custom. So we will do one comma 15. And we want this to be at four in the morning. And we want that to enable during these months and click on done okay so now it's saying okay any day of the week 4 a.m okay and if we go down here so in 13 hours it's going to run okay so that's that's good and if we go to edit it's going to say okay so it's supposed to run on the first and the 15th tomorrow's 15th okay we're good now we will go to smart tests and smart tests we will click add and we will just say all disks because I would rather know up front that there's problem. Okay, first we'll go to the short test and we are going to do custom and we want this to be at 3 a.m. And we want that to be on the 5th. 12th, 19th, and 26th. Because the whole deal with this is you don't want to do it on any number, on you know, a bunch of tests running at the same time. All right, now we will add the long test. So we're going to say all disks, type long, and with this one, we're going to do a custom. And this one starts off at 4 a.m. This one may run a little bit longer. And in terms of the days, we want this the 8th and 22nd. Okay. And click done. Click save. Threshold is 14. I've, it, and my instructions here say to set it to 10. That's primarily if it runs long that it will not let it run past that. So we will do that. And the scrub is going to be starting at 4 a.m. And days is going to be 1 comma 15. Okay. Okay, so 1 in 15 threshold k okay, that's also enabled and let's go down here into youtube because i have a feeling i did something wrong just to be on ah threshold yes threshold is set to 14 and i need it set to 10 and threshold is oh okay here's a good explanation days before a completed task is allowed to run again so it, it for the bigger your volumes are the longer it may take to run okay so we'll click there and with this, the, the, if you don't get a notification, that's a good sign. It's only going to alert you when you do have a problem. So when you hear nothing, that's a good sign. Now you can certainly go in and we're going to look at some other options to see what about interrogating the drives directly. And there are some commands. I've just got to see if they're in this version or if it's something we have to add. But this is something well worth the time to do because wouldn't you rather spend a few minutes just like we have now granted it went a little while but and i had to reread my directions again but it's going to be a very good use of time so this it's going to get you to where you need to be to be a little proactive now if you're watching this on youtube you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in 
If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.